Hello folks, my name is Tayeb Shia. Today, I will show you how to get started with JAPSTER and Couchbase by creating a microservice architecture. Who am I? Currently, I am solution architect at Couchbase. Before that, I was a Java developer and architect for almost 10 years. I am also an open source contributor. I've developed some open source Java libraries for Couchbase and contributed mainly to JAPSTER by implementing Couchbase compatibility. I'm a huge Tesla lover. I can't wait for having full, full self-drive in Europe. You can contact me on Twitter. Here is a sneak peek of what we are going to present in this talk. First of all, I will introduce JHipster if you haven't heard of it. Then I will explain how Couchbase has been implemented into JHipster. And next present microservice architecture and its implementation in JHipster. Then I will show you how to can start easily with it. And finally, demo time. Let's start with explaining what is JHipster. JHipster is a project that marries, marries backend with frontend development. It started as a project that allowed you to build a Spring backend and Angular JS frontend, even before Spring Boost was born back in 2013. Today, it can generate apps with Spring Boot backend and Angular, React, or more recently, Vue.js frontend, baked by Twitter Bootstrap. It is also become more of a platform, as you can also add CI/CD, deploy to many platforms, generate monoliths, microservices, and even mobile apps. You can ch check jpster.tech if you want to know more about Jpster. It has a huge technical stack with so many options. In fact, a study has shown that JHipster can have more than 20,000 combinations. In front-end, it can generate apps with Angular, React, or more recently Vue.js with HTML5 and Twitter Bootstrap. Front apps are fully responsive and can be easily converted to progressive web apps. You can also enable WebSockets to activate real-time updates. In backend, you have Spring Boot with Spring Security and Spring Cloud for microservices. It can generate apps with alt function SQL Word using GPA and Hibernate. It is also compatible with MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, etc. Or you can opt for NoSQL database with Couchbase, MongoDB, Cassandra, Neo4j. You can also add a cache to boot the performance of your application using Hazelcast, Redis, Infinispan, etc. And full text search with Elasticsearch. Of course, you don't need those since Couchbase already integrates both. As of tools, you can build your backend app using Maven or Gradle, and frontend apps with NPM and Webpack, and browser sync to easily test your apps everywhere with one interaction. Tests are implemented using GUnit 5, Cucumber for BDD tests, Gatlin for performance nuances, and Cypress for end to end tests. You can also deploy your apps in a variety of platforms, Docker, Kubernetes, etc. Uh, cloud providers like uh, AWS, uh, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, and even a platform as a service like Heroku, Cloud Foundry, BoxFuse, etc. You have also a complete monitoring solution using Micrometer, Prometheus, and Grafana pre configured for you. My Jeepster goals. A high performance and robust Java stack on the server side with Spring Boot, a sleek, modern, mobile first front end with modern frameworks, robust, robust microservice architecture with JPSTOR registry, Netflix OSS, Elastic Stack, and Docker. JPSTOR makes it more easy as everything is working out of the box for you. Uh, a powerful workflow to build your application with Webpack and Maven Gradle. Everything is preconfigured configured for you. No need to jump between tools. Just one command to build and run front and back applications. Just need to just launch Gradle U or Maven wrapper. That's it. Following upgrades can be difficult, especially breaking ones. This is why a lot of projects stay with the initial versions, exposing themselves to security holes and bugs. This is why JPSTOR pro provides easy automatic upgrades to stay up to date and safe. Why should you use JPSTOR? It has full cycle development, all the way from sketching it out to put it in production. It can reduce starting time by six weeks. And generated code is a solid base for developing high, quali developing high quality applications on long term. Everything works out of the box without any initial configuration just ready to prod. 
JPSOR becomes an extremely popular open source project with more than 300 page views, uh, 300K page views, uh, 177K downloads in NPM. On GitHub, you have 41 core members, more than 18,000 stars, and more than 600 contributors. Uh, for Docker, you have 12 million pools for JPSOR registry, and you have a 76K annual budget in uh, Open Collective. Don't hesitate to contribute to JHipster. There is a lot of bug, bug bounties paid using Opera Collective uh, budget. Now let's talk about how Couchbase has been implemented into JHipster. JHipster used Spring Data Couchbase 4 to provide integration with Couchbase Server Database, which aims to provide a familiar and consistent Spring-based programming model for new data stores while retaining uh, store-specific features and capabilities. This is what helps JHipster to easily implement compatibility with, with uh, multiple databases. In order to start your application faster without any uh, co initial configuration, JHipster uses migration tools to create tables and insert initial uh, data set like roles, users, indexes, etc. It uses Liquibase for SQL databases, Mongo for MongoDB, and Couchmove for Couchbase. Couchmove is an open source Java migration tool for Couchbase. It handles migration between versions of your application using incremental changes. It is widely inspired for, from Flyway. It favors simplicity over configuration. You just need folders with JSON documents or files with Nickel or FTS extensions and respect the nomenclature, which is V followed by the version, double underscore, and description. And Couchmove will execute them once for you. In order to run integration tests, JPSR used test containers to run Couchbase. It is a Java library that supports GUnit tests, providing lightweight, throwaway instances of common databases or anything else that can run in Docker container. That's it. All the rest is almost the same between databases. Now, how can we implement microservice architecture using JPSR? First, what is microservice architecture and what's the difference with Monolith? Microservices is an architecture where you divide a monolith application into a collection of loosely coupled and lightweight services. JPSTAR supports bot style and can generate bots. However, when you're designing your system, you really need to think when you need to choose one architecture over the other. Both have pros and cons. Monoliths is just one single app uh, to manage with, one, with only one uh, single uh, CI CD pipeline and low latency between calls. But as the application grow, the build and deployment cycles be become slower. You have a high coupling between components and it is much harder to scale out. Microservice, in the other hand, are loosely coupled, which allows a faster build and deploy cycle by servers. And they are easier to scale out individual services. But it becomes very hard to maintain and manage as you have multiple apps and multiple CI CD pipelines, which introduce high latency and issues between calls. You also need to think about circuit breaking, what to do when a service isn't available, etc. Sometimes you need to start with a monolith, then think about how to split your architecture. JPSTOR can generate a fully microservice architecture based on Netflix Slack. IP gateway, service registry, discovery, security, monitoring are ready in a few minutes with same experience as a monolith. Microservice architecture in JHipster is composed of microservices, which is a JHipster generated applications that handles REST requests. They are stateless and can be scaled up by launching multiple instances to handle more traffic. Microservice instances are registered into a service registry. It can be either JHipster registry or HashiCorp console. JPSOR registry is a runtime application that is composed of Netflix, Oreca, uh, service registry and discovery, and Spring Cloud config from where microservices get their configuration. It also provides runtime monitoring dashboards. Console can do both. It's a service registry and key value store uh, as a config server using Spring Cloud console. And both get their config from a Git repository. 
Gateway is a, re a reactive GPSR generated application that handles web traffic using Spring Cloud Gateway. It was originally also using Netflix stack with Zool and Ribbon. It gets servers from the registry and redirect requests to the right microservice based on path. It also serves the front part. We have also the GHipster Control Center, which is an external application that monitors and manages your GHipster applications. It can manage also monoliths using stack configuration, static configuration, or dynamically microservices using service registry. So how to start using JAPSTER? You can simply start using JAPSTER without any prerequisite in JAPSTER online on start.japster.tech. It is similar to start.spring.io, where you can generate applications by choosing their dependencies. It allows you to design your application using GDL Studio. We'll talk about it later. Then generate it directly to your GitHub repo. Also, you can add CI/CD pipelines for existing JPSR applications and check usage statistics. We we'll see that later in the demo. But if you want to generate everything in your computer, you will need Git, Java 11, Node uh, LTS version, NPM, Docker, Docker Compose, then you should install JPSR using npm, create a directory and change the directory, it, then simply run JPSR. It will prompt you to choose your options by ask you questions, including entities with using entity subgenerator. But this can be very long, complicated, and error prone, especially if you have multiple microservice applications to generate, or complicated entities with multiple attributes and relationships, which can be confusing. So you can do that with GDL. It stands for GHipster Specific Domain Language. It allows you to model what your applications look like. For instance, you can describe all your application options, deployments, entities, and the relationship into a single or multiple files with simple and user-friendly syntax. So here you can see our monolith application named Simple App using Couchbase as a database and GWT authentication type. JPSTOR is compatible also with all 2.0 and session-based authentication. Here we describe our conference and speaker entities with their attributes, but, and also relationship between them. It helps you visualize it so you don't do any mistake. One-to-many and many-to-one relationships can be confusing when implementing stuff. So this is simplify, simplifies it. JPSTOR allows you to deploy your application to multiple platforms. It has multiple deployment options. Here is a snapshot of all the environments on um, environments you can deploy your applications through. It can be either platforms like Docker, Kubernetes, and OpenShift, cloud providers like GCP, Azure, and Amazon Web Services, or platform as a service like Cloud Foundry, BoxFuse, Heroku, and Clover Cloud. Now, demo time. So first, let's go to JPSTOR Online. As we already said, JPSTOR Online helps you start fast with JPSTOR without having anything installed on your computer. You can create an app. You have the same multiple choices as in CLI. You also have different statistics by day, month, or year. You have the client framework distribution, Maven Gradle distribution, production database distribution, et cetera, et cetera. And you can also design your apps using GDL Studio. This is what we are going to do. We'll use the GDL sample, samples provided by GHipster in uh, GDL samples, microservice e-commerce store for apps with some modifications to use only Couchbase as a database. Okay, let's go back to GDL Studio. Here, notice that we already have our GDL because GDL Studio stores it in local storage. I already prepared it. But you can also log in and store your designs on your profile. Here, we describe our applications. We have four applications, you can see. One is a gateway, and the three others are microservice. There is a lot of options, so we're going to try explain some. But if you want more details, you can go to jhipstar.tech. You have a very nice and complete documentation. 
So here we have the application with the name uh, uh, store. It's a type gateway. You can choose the package name. So it's the prefix. You have the service discovery type, which service registry to use to gather microservice IP and ports. It's either Netflix Orca or Construal. You have the authentication type. We will choose GWT uh, for simplicity to avoid using external service. You can ha also have uh, OAuth2, but uh, it will be with external service uh, like Kclock or Okta. And you also have session based, but uh, it doesn't work with microservice architecture. You have database type. It's default to SQL, but you can also choose MongoDB, Cassandra, Couchbase, or no database at all for microservice. And you have broad database type. Uh, it is uh, useful for SQL databases as you can have H2 locally and MySQL in prod. Now you need to set both to Couchbase even if it is not used. There is an issue about that to remove the need of this configuration when you choose MySQL database, since it is the same in prod and in dev. You have search engine for full text search. It's either Couchbase or uh, Elasticsearch. You have cache provider uh, in order to accelerate your app using Spring Cache and Hibernate second level cache. Uh, no need for Couchbase, as it contains already an in-memory cache. We don't need the, the Hibernate cache neither. For build tools, it's either Maven or Gradle. I prefer Gradle, so go for it. Client frameworks, as we already said, we have React, uh, Angular, or more recently Vue. For test frameworks, it's uh, an array because you can enable them uh, in uh, simultaneously. You have Cypress, Protractor, Cucumber for BDD tests, Gatlin for performance testing, etc. Reactive, it's using Project Spring Web Flux uh, with Project Reactor or Spring MVZ otherwise. Note that this here is mandatory for Gateway because Spring Cloud Gateway works only with Web Flux for now. In the microservice, we have skip user management uh, because by default, user entities and repositories are generated in every app. But in a microservice architecture, here we only need the gateway to do that. So, set to true for all microservices. We have the server port, which default to 8080. Uh, but in microservices, we need to set a different one uh, in order to, to avoid uh, using the same port. And here we describe which entities declared in GDL that should be generated in this application. Otherwise it will generate everything. Here we have entity declaration, we have the entity name, uh, the attribute names, uh, the, the type, the validation required, the, the, the pattern. You, have, you can also have min max, et cetera. We also declare relationships. So we have one-to-one -one relationship, many-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. Here it is the relationship owner, and here it is the destination of the relationship. Uh, attribute between brackets is the name of the relationship. And here, the login, it is the one that is, should be uh, used uh, in the display for in front end. There is also a lot of other uh, interesting options like service if you have a lot of business logic and you want to separate between the controller and the repository interface. You can enable pagination using uh, either uh, normal pagination with, uh, with pages or infinite scroll. And you have also a microservice. It's uh, specify what entities a microservice should generate. You can also add a deployment uh, you can either use the deployment subgenerator uh, directly from the CLI or at once using GDL file. So in deployment type, it can be Docker Compose, Kubernetes, or OpenShift. Apps folder, uh, the folders con contain your apps to be deployed. So here we will have the four applications, the gateway and the three microservices, the Docker repository name where we're going to push our applications, and we'll enable monitoring with promotives. So now that we have our GDL file, let's download it. Okay, here it is. Okay, it's the, it's the same. Uh, but before generating our app, let's check our prerequisites. So we have Java 11, perfect. We have node LTS version. 
and we will check if JAPSTOR is installed. Yes, we have the latest version. We are all set now, but let me show you how quickly we can generate your app using CLI without GDL. Let's create a directory, test, and uh, change the to it. We'll use the jhipstar command to, to launch uh, the, the generation, but we will add the skip install options because, because by default, after generating the map, jhipstar install it. So to accelerate things, we'll skip that part. Okay, we'll have uh, multiple uh, question cho choices here. We're gonna go with monolith. We're gonna keep uh, the default repository name. Uh, no, we don't want uh, web flags. We'll keep the same uh, package name. We'll go with GWT, Couchbase. We don't need any cache. Mm, we'll go for Grail. Here it's monolith, so we don't have we don't need JPEG registry. We'll use Couchbase as search engine. Go for Angular. We we'll generate admin UI. Okay, we'll keep the default team without internalization. We enable Gateline and Starpress. We don't need any other generator. So it will generate a lot of. Okay, we don't need that. Remove this part. Okay, as you can see, it generates a lot of applications, or a lot of files. After generate uh, your uh, the app, you need to also to create each entity. So for that, we will use the entity uh, generator. We'll add also the skip in install in order to accelerate things. It will ask you a bunch of questions like uh, the, the field of your entities. So yes, here we want to add the field. We name it Toto, type integer. Uh, no, we don't want any rules. We don't want any other field. Uh, well, no, we don't want relationships because we only have one entity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it will generate everything for you. And you need to do that for each entity and with all attributes, which can be very long. This is why I prefer using GDL to design my application. So here we're gonna remove this folder. We don't need it anymore and we'll generate our market service architecture using GDL. Okay, for that, you need to do gipster GDL and we'll add also skip install. This generation is done in parallel to accelerate things. Should be quick. You can see uh, all the folders created here. Okay, so have you, now we have four, five folders, one for Docker Compose for deploying everything and four for our microservices and gateway applications. Now we're gonna use IntelliJ to explore our app. As we already said, we have the, four, the five folders. Uh, here are the, the four applications. They are almost the same, uh, but the store app is a gateway. So it's, uh, it contains also the web app. Okay, let's uh, see the store. Uh, here we have a bunch of files, including Webpack, uh, configuration files for Eslint, Git, uh, NPM, uh, Praetorior for formatting automatically the code, Gradle, Jest, uh, Cypress, Sonar, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, If you go to source main, we have the Docker folder here. Uh, we have Docker Compose files that helps you start your individual app with all configuration needed for config server, uh, Couchbase, Grafana, G, Prometheus, etc. Note that for Couchbase, we have a script uh, called configure node.js that helps you uh, start your uh, Couchbase instance already configured with the right services, bucket, and users to start your local app fast without any configuration. Now let's see the Java code. We have the package we choose. Here we have the login configuration, but also a bunch of Spring configuration classes for Couchbase, Async, 
daytime Jackson security, etc. And we have database configuration, which is country based configuration. Here you can see that we have uh, every annotation we need to enable a reactive uh, uh, repository, culture-based repository, etc. And we have some uh, temporary hacks and some workarounds to keep the app perfectly running, even if there is ongoing issues in Spring Cloud uh, in Spring Data Culture Base. For example, here, uh, Pageable was not working in this version of Spring Data Culture Base, so there is little hack to enable it. You, there is also a workaround for Spring Data Culture Base already in default Spring Boot Jackson Mapper. So here it is fixed for it. And here both has been fixed. We are waiting for a new release of Spring Data Culture Base to remove this workaround. We have also a bunch of other configuration, including uh, uh, the bucket, uh, the name, the password, username, uh, validator, etc., etc. But we also have CouchMove for managing our database change log. We'll talk about that later. Let's see our domain, our entities. So here uh, we have uh, included entities like uh, users, but also generated one like uh, customer. Here we have all the annotation we need for CouchBase. And we also have field validations. So here at not null, here the pattern, etc. Let's go and see the rep our repository. So uh, we have a uh, main uh, jhipster Couchbase repository. It uh, contains uh, uh, a customized it to fix some bugs. Uh, like here, we need to, uh, to add scan consistency globally to request plus to enable read your own write consistency in order to fix tests. Also, we have the customer repository for customer. Uh, entity and uh, it contains also uh, necessary nickel joins requests for relationships, but also FTS requests, search requests. We also have the security configuration services, web controllers for exposing our APIs. In source main resources, we have some configurations. And we have couch move. So here we have our initial setup with the, the roles and the users. We, we create also uh, the index that we need and the FTS indexes. We also have different application.yaml uh, configuration files for both Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Uh, for uh, Spring Cloud is bootstrap.yaml. Uh, it contains needed configuration to have a nice, secure, and perfectly working application. We also have in source main web app, the React uh, front source code, uh, which is included in the gateway. Let's go and see the tests. In tests, we have different test files for Java unit tests, uh, but also integration tests. For here, uh, we have the configuration uh, with test containers to start a light instance of Couchbase container and also JavaScript files for end-to-end -end tests using Cypress. Note that unit tests are included in web app source code directly to follow uh, official recommendations. Okay. JPStore apps are very well tested from backend unit and integration tests using test containers to front-end unit tests using Jest and end-to-end -end tests using Cypress. For backend unit integration tests and front-end tests, we can launch them simply uh, using one command. Will you uh, execute it on the all folders? It is Bradley U clean build. Okay, let's wait a bit. Okay, everything is working. Great. Uh, notice that the store apps takes longer because it builds also the web app using NPM. And also for integration tests, each mail microservice starts its own catch based instance. So avoid doing that if you don't have a powerful computer. It can uh, cause some timeouts. Now let's check end-to-end -end tests. We need to start uh, our app be uh, before using Docker Compose. So first for that, we need to build Docker images using JIP. To do that, I will need to do gradually a good job. And then let's switch to Docker Compose and start our app.
everything is up to date because I already done that before to auxiliary things. Let's check logs. Okay. Let's go back to our applications. For end-to-end -end tests is just for front-end tests. So we need to, to, uh, to run it only on the store app. NPM run and run test. It is using Cypress. Okay, everything is passing. Great. Let's check Cypress dashboard that I have uh, configured previously. So here you have test results with all the details about executed specs and how much uh, time uh, duration it, uh, it takes. Now let's browse our app. First, we'll begin by the app that our microserver service are using to register and the gateway is using to, to gather their IP addresses and ports. It is using Netflix Eureka, so it's JPS registry. Let's log in with the uh, uh, default provost unit users. So it is admin, admin. Okay, so here we can see all registered instances with general information, system status, health of this app. Here we have the Eureka menu. You can see different affirmations about application instances, version, git commit, port, profile, etc. But we can also have the history of that uh, instances and registry and registry replicas. Uh, since we can have multiple registries in order to have a resilience architecture. GIPSR registry also includes a configuration server using Spring Cloud Config, where microservices gather their configuration. So here we can see the Cloud Config. You can also encrypt, encrypt configuration keys for security and check SSH keys for uh, the public key for production. We can also uh, browse our registry API using Swagger and OpenAPI. Now let's browse our main app, which is the gateway on the port 88. Let's log in first. It's admin, admin, the users provisioned by Catchmove. Okay, now that we are logged, we can see new menus. We have entities. We have here one page for each generated entities across all microservices. Uh, here we should take, a, take a product categories. It will go to product microservice. We can create an entity. Okay, let's create a sport entity. Let's create another one, music entity. With the description. Here we can search uh, for uh, using FTS. We can look for the description in the lorem, we found it, but also the name and every field in the, the entity. Okay, we can also uh, delete our entities. Here we have the notification. Uh, you can see we have a nice notification for every up update. We, we deleted the music. Uh, here, notice that every ID has a prefix. This is to ease navigation between documents in Couchbase UI. You will see that later. Uh, next step will be to implement scopes and collections now that Spring Data Couchbase is compatible with it and get right uh, of uh, this prefix. Okay, let's create a new product uh, in order to, to demonstrate relationships. Um, let's create a skate. Um, let's skip the description, no price. I should have a nice image of skates. Okay, here it is. And the product categories. Notice that uh, the category here is clickable, which redirects us to the product category page details. Also, here you can see that the field used here is the one that we used in our HDL file as a display name. We also, since we logged with admin, uh, which is an administrator, uh, we also have administration menu where you can see here registered instances received from the GIPS or registry and the path used by the gateway to redirect to the right microservice. We also have the user management to view, manage, and edit registered users in the platform. This one is the one created by our end-to-end -end test. We also have here a bunch of metrics uh, for various timings and statistics. 
we have the health uh, to check that everything is up and running, even Couchbase, DiskBase, uh, etc. We have configuration uh, where we can see all those Spring properties and filter, uh, and we can also filter by prefix. For example, we can see the port here is 8080 for the gateway. And we can also uh, set the level of loggers while the app is running in order to debug it easily. And we have also uh, the API uh, where we can test it using Swagger, for, but for each individual microservice, even the Gipster registry. And here we can uh, manage the sifting of the profile, we can update the password, and we can log out. Now, I will generate some data to show you how our application behaves. For that, we will use fake it. I previously prepared some YAML files to describe objects uh, to generate in, uh, in product source main Docker, fake it. So it's, uh, it's describe, describe how to generate every field of uh, our entity. And in Docker Compose, I also prepared fake it. So we uncomment that and then switch to Docker Compose and apply the change. Okay, it's creating it. Okay. Let's check our app. We need to log in again because we logged out. So now we have a dozens of product categories. We also have a hundred of products. Uh, we can sort by different fields, description, name, price, etc. And below we can see the pagination. We can choose the paginate the page. And we also have a thousands of order items with the linked product and order. So when we click, go to the order, and here you can see the product and, and with its description. Now let's check Couchbase UI. By default, it is administrator password. Okay, here we can see that uh, the bucket was automatically automatically created for us. In uh, this bucket, we have uh, the change log documents to track which couch move change logs has been already processed, and our generated documents. Here we can use the show show range here. So let's see, let's check just the product. Uh, this is what I said earlier about prefixes. It is searching, searching for specific document type in UI, waiting for a collection implementation. Here we have needed indexes and also search indexes for every entity type. And non-needed services are earned prov provisioned by default. Also, we have a nice monitoring system using the when known Prometheus and Grafana stack. So let's log in and we'll skip that part. Here we already have a nice uh, configured GVM dashboard using information gathered by my Micrometer and our microservices apps. You can see uh, 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 you can see uptime, start time, the heap used, no heap, the IU rate, errors, duration, GVM memory, uh, memory pools, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and uh, we can also here in the tab choose which application uh, to to check and which instance. For here we have just uh, one instance, but we can in microservice architecture we can have multiple instances for same app. We also have a GHIP Store Control Center, which is a centralized app to help you monitor and manage your applications. Okay, let's log in. Same admin admin. Here you can see all the instances like for GHIP Store registry, but also metrics, health, configuration, and logs. But the difference is here you can see them for every microservice. If you remember in the store apps, we can see the health only up for this application, which is the store. 
but in JPSTOR console Chanter, you can see it for everything. You can also see the logs uh, processed directly here. And same for API. As for uh, this part, we remove it. As for caches and Liquibase, we don't have any couch for Couchbase apps. This is it for today. I hope you enjoyed our session. Thank you for attending. Contributions are welcome at Generator JHipster GitHub repository. You can start by submitting issues if you find one, and hopefully you can also submit pull requests to fix bugs and help the community. Thank you.